Okay? So it's a prefix. These slides are available here if you want to copy and paste and follow along. But this will be a really, really quick overview of Singleton's library. The library is actually really fully featured. It's really amazing. It's something we have that doesn't have to, that ideally wouldn't have to exist. But because, because Haskell's how it is right now, it does exist. But it's still great as it is now. Um, I uh, have some extensions here that we're using just, just before, so in case you follow along, these extensions are important. There's a lot of them because we're bleeding edge of Haskell, but if you use Haskell a lot, this, you can't get used to just, just barfing out these extensions just like automatically. Um, these are my best friends. And we're going to be using the new type and type extension. Is this on? Is this the microphone for the... Okay. Um, we're using it not for type and type, but just for, um, just for the syntax of getting the the synonym type, type, which is convenient. I don't like writing star. It looks like an operator. So getting started. So the singleton problem, we can look at a famous, a normal Haskell problem that you might encounter just normal Haskell usage, normal beginner usage, is safety with phantom types. How many of you have used phantom types for safety before? It's like a refinement type kind of thing, where um, we have a, we'll say we'll have a door that's either open, closed, or locked. We want to restrict operations on our door. Um, closed, we can, we, we can, we can um, open it if it's closed or closed. We can close it if it's open. We can knock if it's closed or locked. We can't knock if it's open, right? We can't open a locked door. So the type parameter restricts what we can use it, we use it for. So unsafely, um, we'll define a very primitive door type using unsafe make door. Um, they can make, so if you use make door, you can make any type you want, but we want to restrict that, so it's unsafe make door. Make any door of any state you want. So um, this is a door, a simple example, but other examples in real life include state machines, so socket connections, file handles, open or closed, um, obviously. Refinement types, things like less than or equal to certain restricted ranges of integers, or all capitalized strings, for example. And we might have tag types, sometimes people use strings that are sanitized or unsanitized. If you get a string from the web, you might, you might need to sanitize it first. So the tag on your type might indicate sanitized or unsanitized. So these are, this is a very simplified example, but in the real world we get very similar things. Just a toy example. So this is the, the big usage of hand types. If you want to close a door, you do door open to door closed. Um, here we have using data kinds. So open is a type that has kind door state. So only doors of type door open can be closed. If you pass in a closed door, if you pass in a door closed, it'll be a compile error. If you pass in a unknown state door, it'll be a compile error. If you pass in a locked door, you can't close it. It's already closed. So this function by its type signature alone restricts the input. I don't have any questions. So you can only type passing closed door, open doors here. And another example, open door. You can only pass in closed doors. If you pass in a locked door, you can't open it. It has to be only be closed doors. We're using an unsafe implementation for now, but in real life this would be different, of course. In real life it might be an actual, actual logic in real life. So we have a problem now. What if you want to get the door status from a door? We can try mat pattern matching on door, but we can't really use s, right? s isn't a value, s is a type. We can't just put in s. So this is an issue we have with phantom types as a, as a tool. It's useful in some cases, but in this case, it seems to fail us, apparently. Um, other problems, we let's say we want to make a, something that makes a new door with the given status. The, this has problems, of course. This is a naive way to do it. If, it's op if you get open, we want to make an open door, close, uh, close door, lock, lock door. But this doesn't work. I don't want to see why this doesn't work. Uh, well, why doesn't this work? Yeah, the user can give whatever else they want. So let's say this is, does this work? No, because let's see, let's try it out. New size door open, and the, with, we want the tight door closed, and we get door closed even though we use open. It does, doesn't work out. Because in Haskell, the type parameters can be instantiated by the user however they want. They can pick whatever S they want here. It doesn't matter what they passed in. So it's not an issue with phantom types. You can't really take in runtime values and get new phantom types based on that. You can't really decide what type you have based on your inputs. You need dependent types for that. Right, so you can't say, if it's like a, 
unsanitized string, you can't, san you can't test whether or not to make a string sanitized, string unsanitized based on what you get. You have to just give a fixed, solid answer no matter what. Your type can't depend on your inputs. So the fundamental issue in Haskell, the reason why this doesn't work, the reason why we can't make this work normally, is because types only, sorry, should be a that only exist at, at compile time. There is the runtime. Means that the types in Haskell are used just to type check, and as soon as they type check your program, GHC, GHC removes them, they're gone, they're eliminated from, from the world. At runtime, there's no types at all, right? So it's a good performance, right? Types with no overhead. So if you're using Python or even Java or Ruby, your types are actually, are actually kind of more like runtime tags. But in Haskell, you have no runtime type representation. So it's good for performance. But in this case, it makes door status really impossible without type classes that are, that are kind of contrived and fancy. They're, they're fundamentally unwritable because of type erasure. But does it really make it? Or does it? Is it really unwritable? So we're doing now the singleton pattern, which is the focus of this talk. This type here, we're using GADT syntax. Um, first, I'll give an example here back here. I used GADTs earlier to make a door. Um, so this type could be written using this. This says make a door with kind door state to type that has one constructor that makes a door S of any S. So it's like a, it's, a, it's the same way of writing the first one, but in another more co constructor centric way. Instead of giving the constructors as things, you give them as functions, which is a little nicer way of writing these these things. Um, so back to a singleton definition. Here it is. Um, here. So this type is a new single a new type that takes that takes door status as a parameter, and there's three constructors. S opened, S closed, and S locked. S open creates a sing DS opened, S closed creates sing DS closed, S locked creates a sing DS locked. So each constructor creates a different type. The singleton patterns are a singleton type that has only one value. So there's only one value type S open, S DS opened, one value type S DS closed. And the constructor that you use reveals to us what S is. So we can kind of pattern match on types now. It's kind of the magic of it. This is the real magic of it. We can pattern match on types. So given any sing DS, if we get as, as open, we know the type is open, we can do that. Type is closed, we can write closed. Locked, we can write locked. So now the S, the, we're basically pattern matching on, on the type. In this case branch, S is opened. Here, S is closed. Here, S is locked. And this is a boring example because we can do this without GATs. But let's look at a more practical example, which is what we had earlier. Let's write door status for real. Door status will take a witness, a runtime sing singleton of its type, and we can branch based on that. So if, we, so if a door is closed, there's only one S thing that can go in here. So you can only pass in an S closed here. So if a door is opened, we can only pass in S opened here. And if a door is locked, we can, we can only pass in S locked. There's only one value of type saying the S, S locked, and that's S locked. So if, a do, if we have a door S open, we need to pass in actually S opened. Sorry. If we have a door open, we have to pass in S opened. This lets us pattern match on the types, essentially. And because we have a GET, we can enforce that the S's are the same between here and there. And the same property gives us a minute. Okay. And so it's, and we also pass these implicitly. So if we have type class, we can generate the singleton on demand. Is this, and then going over here, you can say initialize door. Now this works because we only pass in S opened, we'll give a door opened. The user picks the one they opened to get the thing they opened. We, didn't, we also use implicit passing style. And I'm, I'm running out of time. There's a little more subtlety I want to go into, but I kind of want to actually introduce the library. Sorry, so this is a little, this is a little longer than I thought it would take. So the library lets us generate these on the fly for free. So and if you use Temple Haskell, you get this will give you generate the types for free, singletons for free. 
And we also get the instances for free to generate the, the runtime witnesses on the fly. And this is, in this way we can, and singletons, sing is a, is a polytrain type constructor. So we have singletons for bools, for maybe bools, even for lists of, do, of, of door, door statuses. And this way the singletons lets us do a lot more things with singletons that are useful and we can do them generically over many different types. And we can even encode type functions. So a function can knock can be door state to bool. And we can use this as a type function to constrict our knocking function to only work on closed or locked functions, closed or locked doors. And so this, I'm out of time. So if you want to look into the slides more, you can do more. Um, but so thank you. This is an extra confusion, this blog, if you want to look into more, how we can go look into this deeper. But yes, yeah, so anyone have any? If you have questions, you can ask me after the talk. Thank you.